All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday, first day of December. Goodness. 12, 12 p.m. California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows uh, some movement down in New Zealand. South Island, New Zealand there along the plate boundary, a 3.1 earthquake. Uh, one of the latest quakes there on the globe. Also a 1.2 coming into the California area, it looks like just right now. Um, not seeing it showing up here across the uh, seismos, but uh, it's a little small microquake out, uh, microquake out there in California. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the West Coast. As uh, far as any major movement goes overnight, nothing above 2.5. One little earthquake there, 2.9 from late last night in the Gorda Escarpment region. Of course, this is the area that's seen a little bit of a swarming out here. I have to go back to the last 30 days to see all the activity uh, out here positioned along the southern end of the plate boundary here between the Gorda Plate and the Pacific Plate. Uh, so still watching that. We really haven't seen a whole lot of trimmer activity out here in the uh, southern end of the Cascadia for now. Most of the time, though, following activity out here along these um, along this fault system, we'll see elevated trimmer, but that's not the case right now. So uh, just for now, a little bit of small earthquake activity offshore there, off northern California. The Bay Area, pretty quiet out here, really nothing major going on. Uh, still seeing some movement outside of Bakersfield outside of Santa Barbara as well. And as you can see, uh, typical earthquake movement out here across the southern portion of the state. Really nothing of abnormal activity. Again, nothing above the 2.5 level out here. In fact, if you look at the West Coast, it's pretty quiet in general out here. A couple smaller quakes around Mount St. Helens. I pulled up that seismograph station there and uh, there's some of those earthquakes showing up on the map really not a whole lot of interesting activity out there across mount st helens or mount rainier pretty quiet out there some of those small little spikes you see on the seismograph stations maybe ice quakes or um you know they've had uh, quite a bit of weather up there lately a lot of snow in the region but uh, as far as earthquake activity goes it looks pretty quiet one lonesome earthquake up here in montana woods bay a 2.1 from late last night couple different fault systems here that run up uh, underneath the Flathead Lake area. A quick glance at the Yellowstone overview. We'll pull this up and see what we have. Uh, pretty quiet there as well. Goodness, um, not really seeing anything of any abnormal activity. This right here looks like some type of outside interference. I was wanting to uh, look into that a little bit further, but it looks like whatever that is, is a uh, localized to the Grant Village area. Really not showing up on any of the other seismograph stations. And um, so I think it's some type of outside interference. I don't know what's going on there, but it doesn't look like earthquake activity or volcanic activity. Just uh, some noise being made around that area of the seismograph station. Whether it's mechanical, who knows what. Could be a generator, hard to tell. Earthquakes out there across the oil fields of Texas still uh, getting hit out there today and uh, as of yesterday as well new madrid seismic zone nothing showing up here aside from this earthquake yesterday 2.7 so in general things are somewhat quiet out there across the area of the uh, north american plate that includes areas up around alaska as well really not uh, having any major movement one 2.5 outside of anchorage today aside from that small microquake activity out there a look at the last 24 hours of largest magnitude going to be this five pointer this earthquake came in immediately following my update last night so i didn't get a chance to cover it but uh it looks as though i haven't really seen any uh, further uptick following that five pointer last night down there in the uh, southern indian ocean region 4.9 earlier this morning along the south sandwich trench but uh goodness i'd say it's been a, a couple quiet days out here uh, in terms of larger movement, we've seen a lot of fours out here across the area. In fact, if you look at the last seven days of earthquake activity, they, there was a number of them. Lots of fours up and down the plate boundary here. No major large-scale adjustment. Uh, I think we've seen that six-pointer, 6 6.1 there in Japan, the largest here in the last week. And then prior to that, a 5.8. Well, I should say following that, uh, a day later, we had that 5.8 down in New Zealand. So things um, still moving out here on the planet. That's a good thing, right? We don't want the uh, plate tectonics to stop out here. That's uh, 
That would something would probably not good happen out there. That's for sure. Deeper activity around the Tonga Trench once again. Uh, but overall, um, anything noticeable here on the globe, I would say, is a migration pattern here across the Java Trench northward. This was not here last night, so things have kind of looks like they've ramped up a little bit around the Andaman Sea area northward. Uh, but mainly fours. It's been consistent out there with a lot of fours up and down the board here. Eventually, we're going to see something larger out here. Um, that's just the way the planet moves out here, the way tectonics work. Uh, but for now, there's now 2.3 out in the uh, Texas area, oil fields. South America and the Middle America Trench there, very typical as normal. Threes and fours, really nothing of abnormal activity. Twos and threes out there around the Puerto Rico Trench. Here's the Peru Chile Trench. Showing absent of earthquake activity out here on the USGS map, but uh, there's uh, some threes out there, maybe even a four or so in there as well. That's why I like to keep the globe here. Um, a combination of the USGS agency there and also the EMSE data coming in that uh, records the smaller quakes around the globe. Puerto Rico Trench, threes and fours out there, the latest of 4.0. Well, excuse me, that's the largest here in the last uh, 24 hours. The latest, a 3.2, roughly within that same area out there across the Puerto Rico Trench. They've been, this is the area where they've been having a little bit of swarming out here. Nothing big going on here yet, but, uh, you know, it's it's capable. This Puerto Rico Trench region definitely capable of producing some larger quakes. And it's been a little while since we've had any, had any uh, major activity out there. Let's check out the space weather activity. Anything major going on on the sun? No doom and gloom. Nope. Everything looks calm as can be. Well, maybe not calm as can be. we got a little, little bit of sea flare activity out here. But uh, we're dipping low. Low-grade sea flare activity. Almost down into the B flare class. So that means that things are fairly stable there with the sunspots. Not a whole lot of uh, interesting sunspots out there. Unfortunately, we don't have the magnetogram image colored version, which I normally use to uh, uh, decipher the amount of complexity that these sunspots might harbor. This is still from the 26th. They've had a flooding event there at the Stanford University where the Solar Dynamics Observatory uh, gets this data uh, imagery from. And it's, uh, it's going to be offline for a little bit, it looks like. I don't know why. I mean, a flooding, they say, but... So we're left with uh, the old black and white imagery here. And this is even a, a day old. This is from yesterday. That's Z time here. And it's not 12-1. It's actually um, almost 12-2. So that's just about behind there, 24 hours. Uh, and there's really not a whole lot here that I could decipher in terms of complexity out here. Just looking at the solar flare chart. Uh, on the X-ray flux chart shows that things are quiet. Not a whole lot of interesting development. We don't have our UV filter. Well, I guess this is the UV filter, Ray. It looks a little odd. Maybe not as high quality here. But uh, not a whole lot of interesting bright features out here that would indicate uh, some flaring going on. Pretty quiet. So overall flare threat uh, shows 10% chance here. That's being uh, probably overestimating that. I don't see anything out there. At least that would warrant the 10 percent 40 percent there for m flare c flare around 99 percent chance or so let me refresh that make sure yeah, that's the latest data uh no major roars in the forecast there folks pretty quiet across the uh solar weather desk today how about uh any close approach asteroids out there a lot of strange stuff going on in the sky hard to tell though on what's truthful and what's ai or what could be you know manipulated are we working? JPLNASA.gov, are we working? Hello. That's a little weird. Looks like they may be offline or doing some maintenance, I guess. Huh. All right, well, we'll have to check back on that because it looks like that site is not working. Well, now it is. <laughs> it's an odd day, folks. Let me tell you, it's definitely odd. Look at this one. Look how close that one's coming to the planet. Looks like they just discovered this one. A car size 
asteroid. 5.3 feet, not a big asteroid, but uh, that is awfully close here. 2024 XA. See, that's not even, that wouldn't even be the good one to open up. 2024 XA. Let's see here. That's super close. I mean, if that thing gets pulled in by gravity, then it could be a neat little fireball in the sky. Almost seems like the NASA sites are awfully slow today. It's not my internet. Everything's working fine on that. Um, let's see if we can find that. Um, oh, shoot. Let me see here. It's going to be 2024 XA, if I remember right. They may not even have that in here yet. 2024 XA. I don't see it. It would have popped up. Come on, There's so yeah, it would have popped up with the uh, search right there. Looks like it ends there with uh, with that. This is a little more complex orbital viewer uh, in terms of monitoring. You know how close a uh, asteroid would get to the planet. They have this little rinky dink one here. That kind of shows the path of that uh, asteroid and the Earth right here. This is just a pretty much a generic as it, as it can be version here. I like the other one a lot better. See, it's just, it's really glitchy. But uh, anyway, 5,000 5, miles there, that's pretty close. Super close. So watch maybe for some fireballs out there today. 5.3 feet in diameter. So that burning through the atmosphere definitely create a fireball. Uh, it doesn't show the exact time here. But just today. So it's rather interesting. Super close. Super close. But uh, they, it looks like they just discovered that. Everything else pretty safe out there in terms of distance wise. But that's... Uh, that's the closest one I've seen in quite a while, but it's seriously nothing of any value. A five-foot asteroid there is going to burn up pretty quickly. Uh, you know, it might leave a, a neat little fireball, but that's about it. So we'll keep our e eyes and ears open here today. See if anybody sees any uh, fireballs out there. No specific area where it could hit or where it would uh, fly over if it does happen to enter into the atmosphere. All right, uh, what else we got? I think that's about it here, folks. Uh, nothing major going on in Seismos. Storm Prediction Center. Nothing severe out there. Quite a bit of snow coming into the Great Lakes area. Expect more of that, a lot more of that on the way, actually, as another cold uh, spell comes in behind the current one, bringing uh, some much more snow out there to the northeast and the Great Lakes states. It looks like there'll be a, a couple rounds coming back to back there. And that's all due to a high pressure system over here around my neck of the woods. Not liking that one bit. That keeps everything high and dry out here. I'm not a fair weather type of guy. I like to see some weather. Sunshine and clear skies all the time is not weather. So that high pressure uh, allowing the, you know, the jet stream to go way up north here and then pull down here on the pressure gradient lines bring a lot of colder air in from Canada to the eastern portion of the country and uh, a lot of snow uh, coming in with that low pressure or with that jet stream as well a lot of cold air coming in uh, following that uh, looks like things happen to mix up a little bit here as we head into the middle of December I'm hoping things will change here a little bit for the California area because uh, we get December's should be one of our wetter months out here and uh, right now the forecast is pretty grim in terms of precipitation for California. 
All right. I'm out of here, folks. Live stream is back up and running. Hope everyone has a good day. Enjoy what's left here of the weekend. December 1st. First day of December out here. Goodness, it's almost 2025 here. It, it, pretty crazy to think that this year's flown by so fast out here. All right. Take care, folks. We'll see you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Have a good one.